In Seattle, Washington, a new mass transit tunnel is being excavated for the East Link extension of the Sound Transit Metro system into the town of Bellevue. The primary component of this job is the, uh, the SEM tunnel underneath downtown Bellevue. It's one of the uh, several contracts for the overall East Link extension for Sound Transit. The dimension of this tunnel is roughly 32 feet tall by 36 feet wide. So where we're standing right now is actually going to be an at-grade station. So we have 250 feet of box structure and then 1,985 feet approximately of SEM tunnel. This method was chosen over the uh, cut and cover method because of the depth of the tunnel and the length of the tunnel. It didn't make sense to get a TBM for this size of tunnel. Uh, the impact to downtown Bellevue was really great. This was chosen as the least impactful method. The depth varies, of course. It starts out low on, on the south end and goes up to the north end, and uh, that will be the next station. The geometry of the tunnel, it's an ovoid shape. If it were a circular diameter, it would have to be much larger. And then also the traverse, uh, there's a very tight curve in here, and to stay underneath the, uh, the proper right-of-ways, uh, it would be more challenging for a tunnel boring machine to maneuver that. There's several pieces of key equipment that we have, uh, primarily our tunnel excavators. They're Liebherr 950s. We also have our drill jumbo, which is very critical for installing our pre-support and doing our probe drilling. That's a cannon jumbo. And our shockcrete robot is a very, very instrumental piece of equipment on the job. SEM excavation is done by removing small sections of material from the face. Pre-support structures are installed before each section of excavation is removed. So they drill a hole here, then they come back in there and they pump grout into each one of those holes. There's a pre-support mechanism. They've got to do 39 of those spiles in the ground at each, at each four foot round. It's a pre-support measure. Depending on the ground conditions and the ground behavior, will determine how much pre-support is required and how many or how small each of those cuts are to make one round of excavation. So we see anywhere between an eight foot round that could take 50 to 55 hours to complete, could extend all the way up to 120 hours depending on how much pre-support is needed. Uh, we are trying our best to segregate the material with natum tunneling or SEM tunneling. It's inherent that we add a lot of grout and shotcrete, so there's a lot of cementitious material that elevates the pH of the spoils. Uh, the elevated pH materials actually gets transported almost 100 miles off the job site to be properly disposed of. It's in our best interest, it's in the community's best interest that we do a good job of segregating our, our adulterated or contaminated spoils with a high pH and pull the clean material out of there that can be disposed of locally in a clean landfill. A shotcrete lining is put into place following excavation of the face. So when they, when they remove dirt, they come back and they uh, put in a uh, flashcrete and a lattice girder and then shotcrete. The total depth of the shotcrete is 10 inches for the initial lining of this tunnel. It's a uh, polyfiber reinforced shotcrete. These are the test panels. Mm -hmm. They shoot shotcrete in and then they can come back and break them to test the strengths at them. Eventually, we will be batching all of our own shotcrete on the job site. The reason for batching on site is that we don't have a high volume that we burn, and we need it 24 hours a day. Then the final lining is a, uh, is a reinforced cast-in-place concrete liner, and then trailing behind that is the center divider wall that will separate the eastbound and the westbound track alignment. The cast-in-place liner will be supplied by a local ready-mix supplier because there we'll be using 200 yards a day roughly every day for nine months. Other considerations include the geology, groundwater, ground monitoring, and sound abatement. Like most geology here in the Pacific Northwest, it's highly unpredictable. Uh, we're blessed with some very over-consolidated, competent glacial till here in the city of Bellevue. It's probably better geology than anywhere else in the city of Seattle. So the stand-up times are great, and it's fairly dry, so that's been a very good, a good plus. Uh, at the north end of the tunnel, we had an effort, uh, ground improvement effort that we went through. Uh, Atkinson went in and replaced all of the, uh, the soil above the tunnel. 
and replaced it with uh, what we call CLSM, controlled low strength material. Uh, the reason why the ground there is a little bit loose is a lot of utilities went in over the years in that area and caused us to have to do the ground improvement. So, and, those, and, that, and that depth of that work goes all the way down to the crown of the tunnel. Right now, there is an effort to bring down the water table with the, at surface dewatering. That program is not uh, completed as of yet. It's a contractor design system. They put in a test well so far, and they're looking at doing another one. If that doesn't pan out, and they're not able to bring down the water table because the water is just not there. They will probably have to do a little bit of in-tunnel dewatering, which is always a proponent of tunneling. We do expect there to be areas of possibly perched water out there. Those will probably be the pieces that we find of water inside the tunnel once, once we're down there. With SCM tunneling or with NATM tunneling, it's very important to understand what the ground is doing, how it's behaving, how it's reacting to what you're doing. And so we have a very extensive instrumentation program, uh, whether those are um, extensometers and inclinometers and piezometers that are drilled into the ground. There's also uh, surface monitoring and then several hundred building monitoring points. And all of those are, are automated. We're with, uh, they're being read with AMTS uh, automated total stations. So you know, four times a day, they're getting read automatically uploaded to a server, and then we can, in real time, see what's happening with the ground out in front of us. And then after we tunnel through a certain section, we will be able to install in-tunnel monitoring, which includes strain gauges on the lattice girders to see how much, uh, how much strain the ground is inducing on the shotcrete lining and also convergence targets, which are basically just prisms that are bolted into the wall and so we can see if, if the tunnel lining is actually moving and deforming. And we expect that it does deform. We just want to make sure that it stays below our trigger levels. The closest point this tunnel comes to a parking garage is three feet. Sound Transit's had to go through and do some garage wall reinforcement. Shotcrete thickened one of the uh, garage walls. That work's going right now. They're actually inside of a private corporation's building garage down there, and they're reinforcing those walls before the tunnel gets there so we don't have any problems with additional loading once the uh, tunneling runs by. So we work 24 hours a day, six days a week, uh, and then we take Sundays off. We have roughly 50 craft employees on the job site between the three crews and our bull gang crew. It's all managed from the south end. Uh, Sound Transit has an office down here as well as Atkinson does. The north end uh, has no presence currently of any other projects. There is a follow-on contractor, um, Stacy Whitbeck Atkinson, that is actually going to be doing uh, the north portal, and they'll be occupying that area here probably in the next year. This job is interesting because it's right in a residential neighborhood here on the south end of this site. That has caused us to have to erect 20-foot sound walls around the entire site and the sound deadening that these walls achieve is, is great. Uh, we've had very little complaints from the neighborhood. So this design and what's put in here for temporary noise measures has worked excellently so far. SEM tunneling will take about two years out of a four-year job. Sound Transit's East Link is targeted to start in 2023. From Bellevue, Washington, Sterling Noreen for Tunnel Talk.